This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. This is the first of three chapters that cover the most widely used image enhancement techniques. This chapter demonstrates a radiometric enhancement using ArcGIS Pro. In chapters 18 and 19, we cover spatial and spectral enhancement. Image enhancement is processing of remotely sensed imagery to adjust display brightness values, thereby improving the image's visual qualities to support the purpose of a particular analysis for a project. A great variety of digital image enhancement techniques are available. Choosing a particular technique depends on the application, data available, experience, and preferences of the analyst or the analyst's customer. See your textbook for a detailed discussion on this topic. We'll be using the first clipped 11-band composite image created in Chapter 15, subsetting a Landsat 8 image. You can also begin with your saved project from Chapter 16 and display the image in color infrared, bands 5, 4, 3. Your display should look similar to mine here. Open the Raster Layer Appearance tab. We'll be examining many of the tools here. These are extremely useful when conducting image classification to help discern different features within the image. Let's begin with the Enhancement group, where we find settings for brightness, contrast, and gamma. To use these tools, you can change the settings using the slider, by clicking the up and down arrows, or by typing a value in the box and hitting Enter. You can also reset to the default values by clicking the icon for the tool. Let's look at brightness, which will make the image appear lighter or darker. The default value is zero, and the values can be negative or positive. Set the value to negative 34. Negative values will darken the image. Now set the value to 14. Positive values brighten the image. Before we look at contrast, reset the image to its default values. Contrast changes the range of difference between the darkest and lightest objects. Notice contrast is not set to 0, it's set to 10. ArcGIS Pro automatically sets this value based on pixel values in the image. Contrast also ranges from positive to negative values. Let's try two settings. Set the contrast value to negative 34. Notice that the image is not darker, it's actually just not as sharp. The contrast has muted the colors. Now increase the contrast value to 35. You get a much sharper image. This setting enhanced the difference between land and water bodies. Go ahead and try other settings. When you're finished, don't forget to click on the icon to reset the values to default. Be careful though, our default contrast setting was 10, but reset will set it to zero. Just go ahead and type in that 10. Gamma controls the amount of contrast between the mid-level gray values of a raster. So with values less than one, contrast is decreased in the darker areas and increased in the lighter areas, bringing out details in lighter features of the image, such as tops of buildings. Gamma values greater than 1 increase the contrast in darker areas of an image, such as shadows from buildings. For our image, ArcGIS Pro determined that 2.4 was the best setting. So what's the right gamma setting? Recall that an image enhancement setting depends on the application demands and the purpose of the project. Let's just try a few. Set the gamma value to 0 0.5, then to 10. then to 1.7. Each setting changed the image dramatically. Experiment with different values, then reset the gamma value to its original value of 2.4. The next tool is Dynamic Range Adjustment, or DRA. 
This adjusts an image dynamically in the viewer when zooming in. The stretch type doesn't change, only the range of values changes, based on the part of the image that is displayed in the viewer. This technique is used to help enhance a specific region seen within the viewer. Our image does not currently have DRA enabled. Let's enable DRA and zoom in to view Carvin's Cove. You can see the difference in the image as we zoom in. The image is much sharper, especially the boundaries of the water body. Now turn off DRA. Now let's look at histograms. A histogram plots the frequencies of brightness values along the x-axis with the number of pixels associated with each value on the y-axis. The shape of a histogram is determined by the features represented in the image and their brightness values. Changing the stretch type changes the histogram and how the image appears in the map viewer. Go to the Raster Layer Appearance tab and select Stretch. There are several stretch types in the list and we'll review a few of these. Let's start by looking at the percent clip option. Percent clip eliminates the minimum and maximum end values of a histogram based on a percentage. Now go to Symbology. Here we see the minimum and maximum ends of the histogram were clipped by 0.25. These values can be changed. Let's do 5.0 on both ends. There's a substantial change in the map viewer, especially around urban areas. The statistics have not changed from the original setting because those are based on the data set values. You can change the statistics of DRA using the down arrow and choosing it from the list. DRA will base statistics on how much of the image is displayed in the map viewer. You can also use the custom option to equalize the histogram across all bands. Each of these values can be changed, but this discussion is beyond the scope of this chapter. Now let's view a histogram. Click on the Raster Layer tab, then Data, and select Create Chart. Note there are several chart types here. We'll select Histogram. If the Chart Properties window did not also open, select the Properties tab in the Histogram window. Under Chart Properties, click on the Number drop-down and select Band 5. This will create a histogram based on this band. The red line on the histogram is the mean line, because mean is the only statistic checked in the Chart Properties window. Choose the other two statistics, Median and Standard Deviation. Lines for those statistics show in the histogram now. Opening the Axes and Format tabs reveals settings for formatting the histogram. And the General tab allows more formatting, like adding titles to the histogram's axes and legend. Now change the band number to band 3. The histogram looks very different. Recall the discussions about spectral signatures in previous chapters. The variations in histograms between the different Landsat bands demonstrates these spectral variations. This ends the chapter on radiometric image enhancement. The goal of this chapter and subsequent chapters is to provide a summary of the methods and techniques available in ArcGIS Pro and not to advise on which techniques to use. We'll discuss further image enhancement techniques in the next two chapters.